New details in the investigation into those four Americans kidnapped in Mexico last week. Local officials say one person has been detained after two of the U.S. citizens were found dead in the border town of Matamoros. The two others are thankfully alive, although one is severely injured, according to a U.S. official, and those two have returned to the United States for medical treatment and observation. Family members say that the four were a tight-knit group of friends traveling from South Carolina to Mexico so that one of them could get a medical procedure done across the border. But once they crossed from Texas into Matamoros, friends believe that the group got lost and was then abducted. The Justice Department, White House, and State Department say they are working with Mexican officials to find those responsible and also to figure out exactly what went wrong. A U.S. official previously told CNN they believe a Mexican cartel likely mistook the four Americans for Haitian drug smugglers. Our reporters are covering every angle of this story. CNN's Rosa Flores starts us off from the border town of Brownsville, Texas, where officials have identified the victims and the survivors. Two of four missing Americans are back in the United States and receiving medical treatment in Texas after being kidnapped in Mexico, after what a U.S. official tells CNN was a case of mistaken identity. Two members of the party were found dead, and one of the survivors is severely injured with a bullet wound to his leg, according to U.S. and Mexican officials. In the party of four, Latavia Washington McGee and Eric Williams survived, Zindel Brown and Shahid Woodward were killed. They crossed the border from Brownsville, Texas into Matamoros, Mexico on Friday for McGee to obtain a medical procedure, according to a friend of McGee's. They drove a white minivan with North Carolina plates across the border and got lost while trying to locate the medical clinic where they were headed, the friend told CNN. Before they were able to locate the clinic, disturbing video shows the aftermath of the kidnapping as heavily armed men loaded them into a white truck and transported them to various locations to evade capture, according to Mexican officials. Se va a buscar a los responsables. The Mexican president saying today during a news conference that those responsible will be found and punished. A U.S. official familiar with the investigation told CNN they believe a Mexican cartel kidnapped the group after mistaking them for Haitian drug smugglers. Mexico's president saying the Americans were caught in a confrontation between two groups. The State Department has issued its highest level forewarning do not travel to Tamaulipas state, where the group was abducted due to heavy crime and kidnapping in the region. There are many people who cross over that border uh, for these medical appointments. Attacks on U.S. citizens are unacceptable, no matter where or under what circumstances they occur. McGee and Williams are now under the care of the FBI, and U.S. officials are making arrangements to bring home the bodies of Brown and Woodard. Our immediate concerns are for the safe return of our citizens, The building that you see behind me is a hospital where we believe that the American survivors are being treated. The hospital is not issuing a statement or reporting their conditions, but we do know from Mexican officials that they are releasing a timeline of this search. They say that they are even releasing photographs of some of the vehicles that were used by kidnappers and that at least one individual, a 24-year-old who was doing some surveillance on the Americans, has been arrested. And Jake, it's important to note that the Mexicans and Mexican officials say that the American law enforcement was not involved during this search. Jake. Mm. All right, Rosa Flores, thank you so much in Brownsville, Texas. Let's bring in CNN security reporter Josh Campbell. And Josh, the Justice Department says that it is working closely with the State Department on this case. What is the role of a investigation into this matter in Mexico? Well, this is an entire whole of government approach is how U.S. officials are describing this. So in the United States Embassy, you have the ambassador, but also in what's called the country team, a host of various different agencies that convene in what's called an emergency action committee. When you, you have a major incident like this, all of those agencies bring to bear certain things like the, uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration, obviously the State Department working the diplomatic angle. And then, of course, the FBI, which, you know, has been involved from the beginning to uh, leverage their intelligence, their human informants, signals intelligence, working with their uh, close partners there in Mexico, I'm told there are very close relationships between FBI agents and Mexican authorities. And so all of that was being leveraged in order to try to identify where these victims are. It's also worth pointing out that although we are now getting a resolution, a very tragic re resolution here to this incident, the investigation is not over. The FBI, Jake, still offering a $50,000 reward leading to the identification and prosecution of these captors. Ultimately, do you think the U.S., assuming that any suspects are captured, do you think the U.S. will request extradition, given that the crimes were committed against Americans? 
I suspect the request will be made. It's yet to be seen whether uh, Mexican officials will adhere to that. Now, on its face, this appears to be an incident that would fall under the U.S.-Mexico Treaty, where you have the attack of, uh, on Americans, the killing, the murder of Americans. And so that could fall under the, uh, the treaty. But it's worth pointing out, and our colleague Gustavo Valdez has been pointing this out, so important that it wasn't just Americans who were killed in this attack. Of course, there was a 22-year-old girl, a Mexican national, on her way to pick up her child, who was also caught in the crossfire of this cartel group that my source tells me uh, they thought they were attacking Haitian nationals. They end up killing uh, these two Americans, injuring the others, uh, and then killing this 22-year-old Mexican national. So I think to your question, Jake, Mexican officials could also make a case that, look, we will prosecute this here in our country, still ensuring that justice is served. Uh, but again, I think the discussion about how that will be done will come later. First, the focus now is finding these suspects. All right, Josh Campbell, thanks. Mexico is the second most popular destination for medical tourism globally, according to Patients Without Borders, that's an international healthcare consulting company. That group estimates up to 3 million people travel to Mexico every year to take advantage of inexpensive treatments. Americans can save between 40 and 60 percent on common medical procedures. But of course, they're also taking risks because these clinics are not held to U.S. standards. CNN and Espanol correspondent Gustavo, Gustavo Valdez joins me now. Gustavo, you've been to some of these towns that are designed to draw Americans across the border specifically for medical care. Tell us about that. Hey, Jake, uh, every time you cross into Mexico, the very first thing you're more likely to see is either a pharmacy or a clinic offering some kind of service to Americans who are looking for a cheaper option to for healthcare south of the border. Typically in this part of the country in Mexico, in Tamaulipas, you will find dentist uh, services. That is the most common. The uh, cosmetic surgery, the uh, weight control procedures are typically done in larger cities where they have larger hospitals because they require more uh, care after the treatment. But there is one town in particular in this area on the Tamaulipas border. It's called Nuevo Progreso, where you see rows and rows of buildings. They could be pharmacies. They could be stores selling uh, drugs. They also have clinics that are offering the services. And right now, they're very popular with Americans who spend the winter south in warmer climates. And now they're going back to their homes with Mexican drugs that are cheaper. And Gustavo, what more can you tell us about the town of Matamoros and the surrounding areas? Are they dangerous? They are. For the most part, the attacks like the one we saw are reserved for confrontations amongst the cartels or cartel members. This is the state that is home to the Cartel del Golfo, the Gulf Cartel. So it is a very violent criminal organization. But typically, you see these attacks among themselves. And what you see is collateral damage, like we saw with this woman who was shot in this confrontation with uh, the four Americans. Typically, Americans are safe as long as they are there during the day. Typically, the, the criminal organizations don't want to get into this kind of publicity, but the danger is always there. That's why it is uh, 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 the State Department has the alert to be careful when you cross into Mexico, especially in this part of the, of the country. All right, CNN Espanol, Espanol uh, correspondent Gustavo Valdez, thank you so much. Appreciate it.